We have a whole section that we looked at for food security and nutrition and mostly focused on food crisis response and some adaptation. But for completeness sake, we'll look at this slide from the IPCC Chapter 7 as well uh, for adaptation options for food security and nutrition. So this is on, what did I do here? Uh, feasibility and effectiveness assessments of multi-sectoral adaptation for food security and nutrition. So feasibility and effectiveness assessments for multi-sectoral adaptation for food security and nutrition. We are looking at assessment results being low, medium and high and there are places where there is no data or no assessment was made for whatever reason. Climate change impacts on food security and nutrition. The key risks are malnutrition in all its forms linked to decline in food availability and increased cost of healthy food. So you may have calories available but they may not be healthy which leads to obesity and diabetes and other risks including mental health uh, illness, stunted growth, etc. So adaptation options, evidence being high, low, medium or high, agreements among uh, assessments and the feasibility dimensions are economic, technological, institutional, social, environmental and geophysical. Effectiveness is also measured from low to high in terms of the results and enabler relevance is looked at in terms of women empowerment, education, humanitarian development and peace nexus, uh, rights-based approach and good governance. So even if you uh, adopt uh, feasibility dimensions are there additional enablers like including women and women's voices, education, etc. Okay, so let's. I think I have a sneeze coming on. Adaptation option climate resilient, nutrient sensitive, and agroecological food production. You have to go look at the details on how these are considered uh, as adaptation options, but often they are. Uh, scenarios so it doesn't matter in terms of feasibility they don't necessarily talk about the feasibility of uh, implementation of these adaptation options okay so there is high evidence and high agreement that the feasibility dimensions uh, and the enabling uh, re enabler relevances occur with effectiveness being medium uh, the feasibility dimension of economic and technological is medium, but institutional, social, environmental and geophysical uh, feasibility dimensions are high uh, and uh, all the enabler relevance uh, of women empowerment, education, uh, human development and peace nexus and rights-based approach and good governance are high. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind in terms of feasibility and effectiveness. So even though you have high feasibility in terms of uh, a few of these factors and high enabler relevance, the overall effectiveness is still only medium for this adaptation option. Sustainable and healthy diets, local, equitable and diverse. So these also uh, implicitly assume that you can have behavioral changes to actually change uh, diet practices and so on but uh, you know that that's not always easy nonetheless evidence of impacts is uh, high and agreement is high as well and the uh, feasibility dimension for economic and technological and institutional are good along with the environmental but it's low in terms of social and very low in terms of geophysical so you have to go and see what this means uh, from the big report but let's just kind of go through it so effectiveness is, is high here and uh, enablers are high for women empowerment and education but low for the other two of human development and right, rights based approach okay uh, access to health, nutrition, services and healthy uh, environments for w including water and sanitation. Again, various levels of uh, assessment results and early warning systems to prevent adverse effects on nutrition. Uh, 
you can see that all of these have high uh, evidence and assessment agreement sorry but the dependence on dimensions and enablers is low but here the effectiveness is high as well the effectiveness is medium only for climate resilient nutrition nutrient nutrition sensitive and agro ecological food production and for nutrition sensitive social protection so we talked about social protection before in terms of let's say welfare uh, but uh, that effectiveness seems uh, uh, sorry effectiveness is high but nutrition nutrition sensitive risk reduction and risk sharing and insurance has uh, medium effectiveness okay so just keep the table in mind while we move on now the related topic summary of adaptation options for key risks associated with malnutrition so key risks here are malnutrition due to decline in food availability and increased cost of healthy food uh, I hope we haven't already done this yeah okay so geographic region global with greater risks in Africa South Asia Southeast Asia Latin America and the Caribbean and Oceania so we had looked at some of this uh, previous podcast of uh, the uh, IFPRI report where we looked at uh, how the regional actions in Africa South Asia Europe and Middle Central Asia had all depended on adjusting imports exports and dependence on uh, uh, you know reducing conflicts and so on to deal with food security or food crisis response so obviously they are reflected here as well consequences that would be considered severe and to whom substantial number of additional people at risk of hunger stunting and diet related morbidity and mortality including decreased mental health and cognitive function micro and macronutrient deficiencies severe impacts on low-income populations from low-income and middle-income countries risks especially high for groups that suffer greater inequality and marginalization like women uh, or migrants okay hazard conditions that would contribute to the risk be, uh, being severe climate change leading to reductions in crop livestock or fisheries yields which we had looked at including temperature and precipitation changes and extremes droughts and ocean warming and acidification exposure conditions that would contribute to the risk being severe large number of people uh, in areas and markets particularly affected by climate impacts on food security and nutrition vulnerability conditions that would contribute to this risk being severe high levels of inequality including gender inequality which is related more to conflicts than to wealth or democracy and substantial numbers of people subject to poverty or violent conflict in marginalized groups or with low education levels slow economic development can make uh, vulnerability conditions exacerbate the health risks ineffective social protection systems nutrition services and health services okay adaptation options with high potential for reducing risks include multi-sectoral approach to nutrition sensitive adaptation and disaster risk reduction and management including food health and social protection systems inclusive governance involving marginalized groups improved education for girls and women all these are kind of social norms and some cultures are more aware and uh, progressive on these issues than others uh, mater mater maternal and child health water and sanitation gender equality climate services and social protection mechanisms these are the papers based on which these uh, conclusions are drawn these relations are drawn remember this is IPCC which synthesizes available literature so the papers are used by the writers of the reports to synthesize these results and it's lucky for us because they provide these nice tables that we can just read so let me read this and then we will conclude with a uh, couple of more things in the next uh, podcast summary of adaptation options for key risks associated with mental health so key risk of course mental health impacts in response to floods storms and wildfires geographic regions uh, global some areas at greater risk for storms flooding or wildfires consequences that would be considered severe and to whom substantial increase in mental illness compared to base rate when you have these uh, risks 
Hazard conditions that would contribute to the risk being severe, increased frequency of major storms, other related flooding or wildfires, exposure conditions, low-lying areas, dry areas, urban areas, vulnerability conditions, physical infrastructure that is vulnerable to extreme weather, inadequate emergency response and mental health services, and social inequality. Okay. Remember previously we said the uh, National Disaster Management Agency of India is a good example. So India has improved its response to emergencies, heat waves, storms and extreme uh, weather like floods etc. so much that actually they have reduced the vulnerabilities and associated risks. Uh, that could be exacerbated from vulnerabilities. Okay, Adaptation options for reducing risks improved urban infrastructure, warning systems and post-disaster social support. So India's NDMA has improved these. Improved funding and access to mental health care. Improved surveillance and monitoring of mental health impacts of extreme weather events. Climate change resilience planning in the mental health system including a community level including at a community level. Um, mental health is still a stigma in most communities, so this is a challenge just to deal with people uh, reporting issues uh, of depression, etc. Mental health first, uh, first mental health first aid training for care providers and first responders. Key issues, especially for women and children, reporting mental health is not easy, so that is something that has to be dealt with as well, just in terms of awareness and training. Um, okay, so let's come back and conclude it in the next uh, podcast. Okay. <laughs>